Hey guys, what's up? It's Zola. Today we're going to be carrying on the distortion effects and uh, having a look at some other ones that I use on here. So I think we got as far as the page turn, I believe. Um, and then we got some other stuff. Got uh, slants is kind of cool for adding this kind of slanting motion to your effects. Um, again, this would probably be useful like when with, with our little guy over here. So if we drop this on slant allows you to kind of add this kind of movement to your character. So again, really useful if you combine this with um, the the bender and the bend it because you can add um, almost this kind of subtle after wobble. So when something kind of comes and sits, um, obviously this is like a straight, so you're getting a straight distortion, whereas the others you have um, more of a bend to them, but it depends on the kind of look you're going for. Uh, you could also make it look like a building is kind of like tilting in the wind so that's how you'd achieve that effect so slant can be kind of useful uh, depending on where you use it corner pin is actually let's go with split first um split is actually pretty cool it's, it's a bit weird i've not used it a million times but you can do this <laughs> basically so um i have used it a couple of times to kind of uh with mouths is one of the best places to do it or you can actually do it with um, with eyes as well, eyes. So basically you can get like an eye to open on itself. So if we do that, we can kind of get um, an eye to maybe open up and reveal uh, another eye. If we come into here and delete this, so you can get an eye revealing an eye. It can be kind of weird and trippy. Um, so yeah, it's a bit limited in that that's all it can do, but um, really useful as well if you're trying to create a zip effect um, this is really the way to go about it so you would have your zip here at the top and bottom and then you would just kind of split them evenly uh, which is what split does versus split two just allows you to split one side more than the other um, so that's what split does so let's come back and remove all these splits there we go uh, Tyler is not just a guy's name, it's also um, a way of basically generating loads of tiles from your footage. That's as simple as it gets really, you can kind of offset them as well. Um, but it's not a particularly pow powerful effect. Uh, corner pin is one of the more useful ones. So corner pin is basically allows you to, uh, you get these four corners and then you uh, basically can pull your footage around and uh, can move it and give it this kind of 3D kind of tint. And a place this is really useful is if you've got like a billboard um, and you can basically get your piece of footage or a word and then you can pin the four corners to the four corners of the billboard and uh, then your picture will basically stick perfectly to the billboard or video in this case. So uh, one of the more useful ones and also if you're tracking stuff um, it can kind of uh, get used. Detail preserving upscale, probably one of the more useful ones. So what this does is it allows you to scale up your footage, but the difference being it actually tries to uh, keep the details. So let's compare this to a normal scale. So I'm gonna duplicate this bottom layer underneath and I'm gonna turn detail preserving upscale off and all the splits on it as well. So above we have detail preserving upscale so, and down here, I'm gonna do a manual upscale. So I'm gonna do 150. Now, if we compare the two, you'll see there's not a massive amount of difference at um, 100. You can maybe see that uh, stuff is, so that's on detail preserving. It's a bit sharper because it basically just adds a sharpen as well. So let's try go to uh, 200. And as you can see, it's going to take a bit longer and we're going to come down here and go to 200 on this one. And again, compare. So we can see here we're, we're getting a lot softer results than here because it's kind of, and if I go and add detail up, it's going to attempt to sharpen it slightly. So there we go. We've got that versus uh, a normal scale up at 200. It becomes obvious. Um, this is a lot more blurry. This is a bit sharper. So if you are scaling up, this is a classic time you would be asked to use this is if you have some like 720p footage but you're outputting to 1080 so it's um, if you've got an old montage for instance that was rendered at 720 you can stick it into a 1080 comp and try and use detail preserving upscale to uh, to give yourself a nice 1080p obviously it won't be true 1080p but um, 
better than just scaling up. So uh, there you go. That's the power of the detail preserving upscale. Moving on, uh, Liquify is great. So um, displacement map actually can be kind of useful. I will probably do a tutorial for this by itself because it has um, some pretty unique parameters that can be used creatively. Uh, Liquify is cool. So it allows you to, this is a tool that's in Photoshop as well. So you have a little brush and if you hold control, you can scale it up or down and it's gonna do whatever you've got here. So I can blot. So if I come up to here, I can blot her eyes and give her this kind of like, um, again, this is a bit like what we were doing with the, um, the bulge, but this allows us, cause what it does is it creates this mesh. So if I come to the mesh, this is essentially what's happening is we're distorting this mesh. And uh, if I turn the mesh off, uh, what we can do is try and we can also, um, if you come to blot, you can do, uh, I believe you can do minus pressure. That's not with that one. Uh, ah, sorry, it's Pucker. Uh, so Pucker does the opposite. So I'm gonna make this bigger and we can try and basically make her nose a bit smaller and bring her nose in a bit there. So uh, if I have a look at what we had before versus after, you can see there's some pretty cool stuff. We've made her nose nicer, no need for an operation. Nice thinner nose there, and then we've bulged her eyes out as well. And uh, you can get really creative because you can actually then uh, keyframe this percentage. So uh, I did, uh, if you've seen the deep down low video by um, Valentino Khan, they kind of do something similar to, that, to this, and they kind of like uh, keyframing this this liquify effect so uh, really really powerful really cool there's loads of co cool stuff you can do with it you can like spin stuff around if I turn the distortion up here so you can like attempt to like twirl or rise around and just go like really really super trippy uh, looking slightly demonic there so I'm going to try and move away from that, from that. Uh, mirror does pretty much what you expect it to do um, it adds a mirror to wherever you have your footage. So if I move this footage here, um, I can then attempt to do this. Now you can see we have a problem here, um, which is we are missing the edge of our canvas. So we could do the grow bounds trick. So if we type grow bounds and put drag that um, in before our effect and expand that, we can uh, then grow the edge of our clip. And so now we've got this. And the great thing about mirror is you can duplicate it. So you can do this here and then you can, so now I have a horizontal and a diagonal one and you can just stack them over and over to get some like really weird ass of like kaleidoscopic effects. So we're uh, really cool if you com combine them together, especially with grow bounds, uh, some really powerful combinations. Moving on, distortion, distortion. Um, where were we? We were down to mirror. Optics compensation, let me just, uh, this allows you to, it's basically like to uh, compensate for uh, camera distortion. But, you know, you can uh, you can use it to do some creative stuff as well. So like blend the edge, uh, kind of bend the edge just slightly to give you a kind of, um, I think it's called barreling and pin cushioning to give this kind of effect and you can kind of like do a zoom in like this so you can use it creatively as well but it is mainly used to fix camera distortion um, but yeah it can be used for other things polar coordinates is kind of cool uh, but only does one thing and it creates like a circular map um, of your of your picture but when it's really cool is if you change it to rectangular to polar and then you get uh, it basically like uh, turns your whole thing into a ball so you can get these really weird, weird looking, uh, <laughs> weird looking world shapes. Um, so yeah, I've, I've used that quite a few times uh, just with like fractal noise and like these blue lines, for example. That's great, great example. Uh, if I drop polar coordinates, change it from rectangular to polar, now you got this kind of like uh, psychedelic kind of circle. You're always going to get this join here. The way to fix that would be to kind of uh, make sure that this edge is mirrored here. So you would like duplicate your footage and feather it off maybe or something like that. And then that way it's going to join perfectly. 
you've just got to remember that your left and right side of your comp are matching so you can maybe even use like mirror uh, first uh, bring that in to the middle and then afterwards use rectangular to polar and now we've got rid of that joint so uh, that's one way to do it and I believe that's brought us to the end of our distortion we've got some others here uh, one which I can't remember doing which uh, I'm not sure if it's here uh, do, 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 no uh, it might be it's actually probably in a another a, another another set of uh, plugins this is quite cool though um, where turbulent this place uh, you can push this like really high and you get these kind of weird psychedelic effects you can animate it so um, if we add the little time expression here time times 100 we can get this kind of like weird really trippy um, kind of uh, I don't know I'm not, I'm not even sure what you would call that but kind of uh, gel or I don't know it's just psychedelic it looks cool I really like doing stuff like that you can add stuff like twirl twirl basically just uh, spins this middle around so we can then bend that further and get this weird kind of looking ball um, so there we go uh, we also have wave warp wave warp is, is cool uh, and it just adds uh, the same thing but like uh, you can have different waves so you can have the square ones and you get this kind of weird um, psychedelic kind of hardcore slip, slip, slip scan effect I guess almost if you bring it really look you get this kind of uh, almost Venetian blinds looking stuff but then you can like keyframe the direction and it can be a lot of fun so um, definitely as you can see there's a lot of potential in the distortion effects and if you just start stacking them you'll see that it kind of gets really fun really quickly so definitely and you know I've only gone through half of them I mean the others are useful but they're probably ones that I use less and I told you I wasn't going to go through every plugin because that would take forever and also I don't think all the plugins are particularly useful in this program so um, those are the ones I use thanks for watching guys as always and I will see you in the next video